Welcome to the Creative Cows DSLR Podcast. I'm Robbie Carmen, And I'm Rich Harrington. You know, Rich, one of the things that we see all the time on the Creative Cow DSLR forum and just out there on the web in general, especially since the advent of these DSLR cameras, um, is people talking about aperture. Yeah, right? and, and this is really being driven by, what do you call it, this uh, love boca, of bokeh? Bokeh porn, yes, bokeh porn is what I call it, yes. Yeah, th this infatuation with depth of field. Yep. A and, and aperture is really uh, a driving force but it's not just for depth of field. I mean, this really ties into the bigger picture of what we typically refer to as the exposure triangle. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that allows for these cameras, um, besides using you know wide aperture lenses to get that bokeh porn, is also the size of the image sensor. These big image sensors give us uh, that capability to do so, but it starts first with the lens. And as you pointed out, the sort of exposure is sort of tied to three things, if you will, right? So there's aperture, which we're going to talk about more in depth. Yep, there's shutter speed, which for DSLR video, you generally have to consider a fixed variable. Yeah, it's typically going to be a 60th if you're shooting 30 frames a second, or a 50th if you're shooting 24 or yeah. 25. And while that may change, that's really being driven by sort of standard shutter speed that's used for video. If you change it, it starts to look either stuttery or a little blurry. bit more blurry, yep, blurred yep. out. So, you know, you might deviate from that, but that's sort of the standard. And, and typically, your shutter speed is locked, leaving you really aperture ISO, yeah. and, and I see ISO as sort of being like the correctional push on the rudder to sort of, you know, get it the last way there, but really it all starts with aperture. Right, exactly. And I mean, just to be clear, when we're talking about aperture, what we're really talking about is how open the lens is. If you take a little peek inside the lens as you adjust aperture, you'll see the camera's eye, if you will. When you go to lower aperture numbers like f2.8 or 1.4 and, and such like that, you'll notice that the eye actually opens up more. Letting in you, more light. Letting in more light. You go to a higher number like say f8 or f10, that eye is going to close a little bit. And sometimes you're going to close that down if you're shooting outside under bright light or if you're shooting in low light, you're going to open it up. But there really is a big difference. When you go out there and you look at a lens, you know, like this standard kit lens is a 3.5 to a 5.6 aperture. And that's dependent upon the zoom. So as I zoom more, the aperture is yeah. actually getting to, is going to be a higher number. And then like a lens like this one, this is a fixed aperture of 1.4. Uh, this guy has a fixed aperture of f4. You know, the, so there are fixed aperture lenses and then there are variable aperture lenses. And typically more expensive lenses, will be fixed aperture, even if they're zoomed, right? right? So uh, you're paying that extra buck so you can contain uh, a constant aperture throughout the zoom range, where cheaper lenses uh, sometimes vary that up a little bit. And, and what you're gonna see is, is that the more expensive the lens, oftentimes you're gonna have lower aperture, lower f-stop. Yeah, for example, this Canon uh, 50 millimeter lens is a 1.4. But, but Can they do have a 1.2. The Canon makes a 1.2, which is significantly more expensive. And then they offer, um, Canon makes the, what people often refer to as the nifty 50. Which is a 1.8. Which is a 1.8, right. So yeah. they're, they're different camera manufacturers or you know, lens manufacturers are going to give you different aperture options. Sure. Now, the one thing that's also kind of uh, important to notice about when you're choosing the lenses when it's coming to aperture is that most modern lenses, like the one on this uh, body now, a couple of these guys, that aperture control is done on the camera body itself. With right? a dial. With a dial. It's a clicking through the different apertures, right? Whereas older style lenses or lenses yeah. that might be have you know cinema type lenses or lenses that have been converted often have physical manual controls on the lens. Yeah, one of the things I like to do actually is I just pick up older lenses yep. that have the actual f-stop controls as it so I can make an adjustment right here. Yep. Now I haven't de-clicked this yet, but you can modify the lens so that could be actually turned smoothly without having any resistance. Yeah, and if you talk to a lot of you know very experienced DPs, they'll you know, prefer lenses with manual aperture controls like this so they can have a nice fine control over their exposure, you know, and also in different shooting situations. If you're going, you know, all of a sudden you're following somebody in your bright sunlight and they walk under a veranda at a restaurant or something, you might need to open up the lens a little bit. Yeah. And it's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes when you have to click through that. So a lot of the more expensive higher end lenses, like the cinema style lenses, that will give you that manual aperture control. Good, so when you're out there shopping for lenses, Always look at that f-stop. Yep. Consider the aperture and consider your application as well. Yep. Yeah. If you're only shooting bright outdoors under you know lots of lighting or studio lighting, 
that lower f stop is not going to be as big of a deal. But you know, we've done some shooting at concerts and events. Yep. There's a huge difference between a 4.0 lens and a 2.8 lens. And you always have to balance the bokeh porn. You know what I'm saying? If if you really you pay more for it, you, <laughs> you do. And if you really, really, really want to take advantage of these large uh, uh, image sensors in these cameras and really get that depth of field, then you know, going to uh, a wide aperture is really the best way to get there. Great. Well, when you guys are posting things up to Creative Cow and you're sharing some of your videos, go ahead and share some details about the lens choices that you made because that's really going to help people understand how the lens is really guiding what the shot capacity is. Absolutely. Great. My name's Rich Harrington. And I'm Robbie Carmen. And be sure to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out their DSLR forum. Tons of great questions up there. Post your own. Look for answers. And of course, check out their magazine for good information as well.